Today's video is brought to you by Compassion International, releasing children from poverty in Jesus' name. old friends and exotic hens. What's up everybody? My name is John and welcome back to the channel. It's good to be back making videos again. Today we are beginning a brand new three week, seven minute sermon series. So that's 21 total minutes, give or take. Today we're starting a new series on the biblical concept of justice. Now, I know a lot of you out there probably watched the new spoken word poem that I put out on this channel last week. If you haven't seen it, it's about justice, and much of this series over the next three weeks is gonna be all about unpacking and diving a little bit deeper into some of the words and concepts that are brought up in that poem. So if you haven't seen it, well then you should probably go and see it. So, let's talk about justice. 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 Now most of us are pretty familiar with this word and we have some sort of meaning or definition attached to it. Justice, for many of us, simply means being fair or equal, that's being just. Which makes sense considering that our English word for justice actually comes from the Latin root word that means equity. Others of you, when you think about justice, you think about crime. Like when a criminal is arrested and tried and sentenced, we say that that person was brought to justice. We say things like, justice was served. Or on the other side, when someone is wrongfully accused, we say that we want justice for that person. For those who think this way, justice looks like someone getting what they deserve, whether that's good or bad. And still, there are others of you who you think about justice as doing the right thing. Like if someone is a good person, we also might say that person is a just person. And I want to be clear, all of these are very real, very viable definitions of that word, justice. However, when it comes to the Bible, the word justice appears over 400 times in the Old Testament alone. The Bible's got a lot to say about justice. And the Bible also speaks of many different forms and meanings of this word like we just talked about. But the very earliest foundations for biblical justice is actually found on page one of the Bible in Genesis. In the beginning, in the creation story, God creates the heavens and the earth and everything in them and it was all good. It's all good, baby. And we learned that humans specifically are made in the image of God. And this means that humans are meant in a way to be a representation or a reflection of all of God's beauty, his power, and his goodness in the world. And something that's actually very unique about the creation account that we find in the Bible is that according to the Bible, all humans are made in the image of God. Not just kings, not just men, not just people of a certain race, but all people are made in God's image. And the implications of every single person being made in the image of God means that everyone is equal in God's eyes and therefore deserves to be treated fairly with equity or justly. And this idea of respecting the image of God in others, this is actually how God designed us to live in relationship with other people. And the Bible's word for this is righteousness, which really just means right relationship. And this word, it is almost always connected with justice in the Old Testament. Justice and righteousness seem to be connected. They seem to sort of go hand in hand. Meaning that when we honor the image of God in another person, when we treat every single person with love and equity and respect and fairness, what we're doing when we live in righteousness is we are actually creating and promoting justice in the world. So I hope you're starting to see that the biblical idea of justice goes a little bit deeper than just doing the right thing because it's the right thing. But the biblical case for living a just life, the reason that the Bible gives us for doing the right thing or treating other people well, is because every single person you come across is an image bearer of the divine. And to disrespect the divine image within them is not only to disrespect or dishonor the person, but it's also to disrespect or dishonor the God who made them. Now, this might seem really basic, right? Like, be nice to people. Yeah, thanks, John. Went to kindergarten. But the question that I want us to ask ourselves today 
is how are you doing with this? Are you truly treating everyone you come across as an image bearer of God? Are you not just being nice, but are you truly respecting and honoring the divine spark that exists within other people? Both people you like and people you don't like. What about the kids at your school who annoy you? or the ones who everyone makes fun of, or even the ones who make fun of you? How fairly do you treat your siblings or your parents on a day-to-day -day basis? Now, obviously, none of us does this perfectly. But the point is, justice is not just attending rallies for criminal justice reform. Justice isn't just giving lots of money to ministries or charitable organizations in third world countries. While those are important ways that we can help bring justice, and we'll certainly talk about those, but one of the simplest, most practical ways that each and every one of us can help to create and promote justice in the world today is simply by recognizing and honoring the image of God in the people who are around you right now. There's this church in Indiana whose podcast that I follow, and they have these mantras, which are these short phrases that help to communicate the heart or the vision of their church. And one of their mantras speaks so beautifully, I think, to this idea of every single person being made in the image of God. It's really simple, it's just three words, but I think it's a beautiful reminder. And the mantra goes like this, everyone, an icon. Meaning that every single person you come across is an icon or an image of the divine. And so in every interaction, and especially in the interactions with those who are hard to love or honor or respect, I want to encourage you to borrow that mantra, everyone an icon and allow that truth to drive you into right relationship with everyone around you. This may seem really obvious and really easy, but this is the first step to promoting the biblical project of justice in the world. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I wanted to take a second to let you know that today's video is brought to you by Compassion International. Compassion is an incredible organization with a very simple mission, to release children from poverty in Jesus' name. In today's video, we've been talking about justice, and I can't think of a more practical way that you can help promote justice in the world than by getting involved with Compassion. Compassion provides opportunities to sponsor children in some of the most underserved areas of the globe. And in partnership with people just like you, they're making a huge difference. Compassion Children spend an average of 4,000 hours in safe, nurturing programs throughout their childhood. They're 40% more likely to finish secondary education, 80% more likely to graduate college, and 75% more likely to become a leader in their community after graduating. Child sponsorship through Compassion doesn't just seek to meet the physical needs of the child, but also the emotional, the intellectual, relational, and spiritual needs. Sweet Bear and I sponsor a child through Compassion, and not only do we hope that our relationship with Imani is transforming her life, but we know that it's transforming us. So if you're interested in promoting more justice in the world and looking out for the left out, I highly encourage you to go to compassion.com slash John and just get some more information today. That's all I have for you this week. I love you all. Keep being awesome.